Hello everyone and welcome to Running the Geo Dandy Space Shuttle in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. In a previous video I discussed how to install this particular space shuttle system. The special feature of it though is to use this ascent guidance and re-entry guidance in order to control it and that requires KOS. So this is the GitHub for Geo Dandy and uh, this OPS1 is the ascent guidance, this OPS3 is the re-entry guidance and this is required uh, to interface with Ferm Aerospace Research, and that is part of why there is a special version of Ferm Aerospace that is necessary for this. So, we need all three of these things. This is the page for OPS1, the Ascent Guidance. I'm not going to discuss all the details of what is being shown, um, but you can read it all here. Uh, rather, I'm just going to show how to put it in and get it working. And so we can see set up, uh, basically the way I've put together the space shuttle should be fine, except that we just need to make sure that the launch clamps, etc., are attached to the ET or SRBs, uh, generally the SRBs. The whole shuttle stack was uh, tied down by the SRBs uh, in real life. And so just make sure that that's the case. And everything else is uh, as is. The RCS covers we might need to consider. So making sure that those just are gone. And this is the staging order. Anything in the payload bay is here. And so SM, uh, the spatial main engines and the RCS is in the lowest thing, the first thing that happens. The SRBs and the launch clamps are next. Then the SRB decouplers and set motors. And then the external tank separation and OMS engines then anything in the cargo bay, and then the tail parachute. This probably doesn't need the ferrum thing, the KOS ferrum. This OPS3 does. And so you can see here uh, its installation, but well, set to be English, uh, the joystick thing for the wheel steering, and then the install we've done. KOS version is 1.3 at least, that we did it automatically. Uh, KOS ferrum, as mentioned, and then the fork of the space shuttle. So that's what it requires. And you cannot have atmospheric autopilot. Um, not sure about trajectories, but uh, we don't have atmospheric autopilot right now. I did a clean install and everything. And uh, Kerbal Construct, we'll get to the scenery some other time. We're not going to do the scenery right now. So I'll talk about the scenery separately. That's a whole other topic. Uh, so yeah, we'll be launching from the stock launch, the launch pad. Let's just get started. So I've already downloaded these things. And so we have three zip files here. And if we open OPS1, there's the master. You can see ships here. Okay, so unlike installing mods, this is not going to be in game data. Instead, it's going to be in the ships folder. And it'll end up in the scripts script folder. What we want to do is just get this ships folder here and dump it like that. And KOS will automatically read it from this location. And the same for OPS3. So ships folder, ships folder. So for KOS Ferrum, uh, let me, there's, there's a script thing and also game data. So we're going to just take the game data things and the ships things and copy that. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You don't need the source folder or any of the rest of the stuff. Though, if you want to read the readme, that might be good. That's all you need. Technically, you can, you actually, you can't do it while running the thing because you need the FS Ferrum part, the KOS add-on Ferrum thing here, and that needs to load with the sim. So, uh, with all that, we can run the sim. While the sim is loading, though, I can discuss a few more things that we need to know. For the re-entry script, it's important that the control surfaces, uh, let me see if I can find it here, the control surfaces have certain uh, ranges. And so here we have check the following settings. It should be done automatically, really. But the Elevon should have 100% pitch authority, 50% roll, and 15 deflection, and the rest set to zero. Body flap, 100% pitch, 15 deflection, zero for the rest. And the rudder should have two stock uh, control surface modules instead of one far module. Set deflection to 18 and control surface range to 48. Uh, flaps and spoiler settings are now irrelevant since the program will manipulate them automatically. Uh, check that the rudder air brakes deploy and body flap spoiler is not present 
in the breaks action group. So we'll check that. And for realistic breaking performance, well, you know, anyway, uh, but yeah, so we'll set that up once we get the sim started along with everything else. There's a lot of setup and making sure that the staging is correct. And then to come back down, we also need to measure the runway. And I'll show you how to do that probably badly. Okay, so let's try and set things up properly. Let me roll this like that for now. I don't know our pad orientation, but this is probably a good idea. And we'll have three clamps like this. Three sets of clamps, just like that. You could probably put a fourth one in the middle, but just in case I'm not going to do that, because that's getting close to the shuttle. Uh, eventually I'll want it higher up. I'll leave it like this for now. So the clamps go there. The RCS ports all go down here. The Sepatron, Sepatron, Separ uh, nose cone Sepatrons, and the couplers are there. And then, and then we have the external tank and the OMS engines at the same time whatever's in the cargo bay, and then the parachute. Okay. So we don't have anything in the cargo bay right now. Then we check control. We have two different controls here. They are set to 18 and 48, as you can see here. This is correct. Um, yaw should be active. And for this one, Standard control pitch only, control deflection 15, and that is correct, zero for everything else. And then for the elevons, 150, uh, angle attack, I don't remember it saying anything about, but we'll just leave it be. It said actually that for the elevons, it's 150, control deflection 15, and then everything else should be set to zero. So I don't know about this angle of attack. Mm. I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not sure. Maybe that has been updated since the last time the instructions have been updated. So I'm not sure about that. I haven't seen anything about that. But maybe we need to set that to zero. Okay. And then check that the rudder air brakes and body flap spoiler are not in the brake thing. So main gear, yes. Body flap, no. Elevons, um, we probably shouldn't have those either. Really the only brakes we want are on the main gear. And then of course the gear should have all the gear deployment stuff, the orbiter and the main gear ones. And just for my own sake, I don't know if it's necessary or not, but certainly for the one that I've used, uh, for the Previous launches of the Giordani shuttle, I added the APU toggle to 1, Action Group 1. I added all the fuel cells to Action Group 5. And I added the ET door to, and that's actually on, well, the whole thing is all together here, uh, on Action Group 7. So, but that's probably not necessary for the script. Uh, as far as the fairings on the RCS, I believe it's these shrouds. So you can just disable these and that'll uncover them. I don't know whether that's necessary or not. Uh, these I think can stay covered. Get. Okay, those aren't RCS ones. So let's open the doors. We've got that up front. I'm missing the goo band antenna. Uh, but uh, we can have a NASA docking system in the back. Ooh, wherever I put that was not the right place. We may have a docking port mysteriously floating somewhere. Okay, but yeah. Uh, generally, putting the payload as far in the back as possible is a good idea. The center of mass is very close to the back here. Especially if you're going to bring something back down. Don't put it too far forward. Just for testing's sake, we'll put 12 tons. The shuttle can bring that both up and down. And my usual is avgas. I'll just underutilize it. This should not cause a problem for the script. And just to have something 
to do in that one slot I'll uh, enable staging on this port and put that staging in that slot. Okay, we don't have Kerbal Constructs or anything, we should be just launching from the default pad at Cape Canaveral. Okay, nothing here, like I said, we'll get to that some other time. Okay, I made sure I had the uh, updated versions. I think I tried to run an older version of OPS1 and OPS3. Let me uh, try it again, but it's not shuttle.ks now. The, uh, the name has changed to OPS1.ks. Okay, so OPS1.ks is what we want. Let's see what it does. It used to be shuttle.ks. Now we've, we're just doing the default settings here. I haven't changed anything, but we can change things in the script, like the inclination. Okay, throttle down. Vehicle has reached max Q, as it says. Again, I'm not going to explain all this business. After the booster is set, I'll talk about what you can change in the program. OPS-1 requires OPS-3 for the abort scenarios. Okay, getting ready for booster set. Let's see how this goes with the Sepatrons as they are. Not ideal, but at least it didn't kill anything. So again, I advise... I mean, I probably have something turned the wrong way. Uh, also, the booster uh, nose cones can be colored differently. They probably should be in this case. Actually, the whole boosters, I think, probably have a different texture as well. Okay, so while this is coasting up, let me show you OPS-1, which is very simple, actually. OPS-1 just has this bit here, and then runs the main bit of it separately. So, this is to make it easier for you to decide what to do with it. Uh, don't touch the cutoff altitude. This is where you change the inclination, so we're just going to 28 right now. Uh, and you can change the apoapsis, probably shouldn't change the periapsis. That's for external tank uh, disposal. So, just the apoapsis and the inclination there, and in my experience it hits those pretty well. So again, this is OPS1.ks in the script folder in the ships folder in your main folder. And that's what you would run. You would run OPS1.ks. Okay, it is rolling over now. Okay. And we're getting there. Okay, we have shut down. We were aiming for 380. We got 384. We were going for 380 and three and 50 on the periapsis. Oh, let me just. It seems to. It's not reading my throttle, is it? Oh, it might have been reading my throttle. I don't know. Anyway, I think. Okay, it says program ended. Before it didn't used to say program ended, but now it does. Okay, so. What we want to do is coast. You'll note that the orbit is changing. That's because we're still in the atmosphere when it finishes. I have clouds somehow. Uh, I didn't realize the environmental vision enhancements was already installed. Weird. See, sea can very dangerous stuff. Oh, we're losing electric charge right now, uh, and. I don't know, it didn't turn on the APU, I suppose, uh, otherwise we wouldn't be. Um, I'll just toggle the fuel cells instead, so that should have been Action Group 5. Oh, oh, okay, so we have a problem here. Uh, the problem is that we need to, and nothing reminded me of this, we need to set the fuel priority of this so that the, ex the engines don't take the fuel from this. We need to make sure that the fuel priority here is less, much less. 
So we've got a bit of a problem. We need to uh, do a one orbit abort. Let's let's just say that that's what's going to happen. We we can run the APU to get power for now, and we are going to try and come back immediately. But first, we'll make a full orbit. It's not an orbit once around, keeping the periapsis low. We'll make a full orbit for the reentry script. And tilt up a bit to compensate for the tilt of the OMS engines. About 10 degrees. Uh, but actually right now we want to tilt down because we're not quite at apoapsis and I don't need to be this high. We're over here already. I need to give ourselves enough time to do the re-entry burn. The cross range of this should be capable of handling much more than this sort of uh, difference as we get there will be further north. Not too much though, because we went to 28 degrees. If it was more than 28 degrees, the difference would be bigger. If you want to make things easier on yourself to line back up with your launch site, you can go to one and a half hour orbit. That'll be 16 orbits after 24 hours, and so it's very neat and tidy getting back in line with things. But with the reentry program you don't need to do that it's got cross range to manage things that are pretty severe but you do need to time it somewhat so that you're actually over the launch site or the landing site can't be completely off so i'm gonna go to a slightly higher orbit just to test it out a little bit Okay, well, having done that, we need to first measure the runway and make sure it knows which runway to use. So, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Back to Space Center. Now, our only runway is this runway. We don't have Cape Canaveral HD or the um, Cape Canaveral pads. I, I think that would add a runway as well, the, the actual shell runway. But we don't have the shell runway, so this will be more interesting because I'll show you what to do when you don't have that. Okay, so to measure the runway, I have this. I initially tried a version with regular landing gear in the jet engine, but that kept exploding. So we have this instead. Measure rwy.ks is what you want. So we're running a KOS script that says run measure rwy.ks. And what we have to do is mark the two ends of the runway with action group nine. So action group nine. Action group 9 here. Okay. And I've got a jet engine because of the previous format. Wow, this is... Right now my joystick does not have steering. So we should probably add wheel steering to that. But that's a separate issue. Uh, this is twitchy. I wonder if fine controls... Yeah, fine controls works with the wheels too. So that's probably a good idea. What you do in the middle doesn't matter, as long as you get to the other end and mark that spot. Now all this script is going to do is churn out some information for you. And then you have to enter that information into the database of landing locations. Okay, let's just get in the middle of the numbers. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, breaks. All right, we'll say this is two. Alright, so it's given us these numbers. Okay, so in your main folder where the executable is, there's a ships folder. Go into that, go into the script folder, go into shuttle underscore OPS3, and there will be a file called landing underscore sites.ks. And that will look like this when you open it up in Notepad. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this KSC section, paste it because this is not the normal shuttle landing runway I'm not so that I'm gonna make a new runway I'm gonna say stock runway you could call it whatever I wouldn't recommend putting a space in there it's bad mojo um, stock runway hopefully will work out McCord has a capital there so that should be fine um, and then we're going to go back to the sim and copy the numbers that we had so we see latitude there so we are just going to put those numbers into the stock runway field. So 612, 
8.65, elevation, it says 78.7, though I've had iffiness with the elevation thing. The length 2395.64, and then the heading is 270. Okay, and make sure there's commas after position, elevation, length, but not after heading. So we've got a new one there. That's a new landing site, save that. And that should be all set up. We don't need a little rover anymore. Over on the other side of the planet from our landing site, creating a maneuver node. And then we're going to say run OPS3 underscore deorbit dot ks and it should give this thing and we'll say target stock runway it should you know have that available okay and then it gives us this sort of information and what we need to do is make sure we are actually going down that would be helpful let's set the periapsis to something like 30 kilometers first so that should be fine. And what we want to do first is get the reference range sort of close. This is pretty close. And if we pull it farther, that number goes up. So we actually want to move this deorbit burn point closer. So if this FPA at entry interface EI is too low then you need to uh, go shallower so you go prograde a little bit more and when I say too low is more negative than the number above it uh, if it is too high which is less negative than the number above it you're going to pull more retrograde so right now we have it and then after you set that you can pr probably ignore the velocity uh, that'll automatically happen with the first one and the second one, uh, and the bottom one here. So you just get that first number right, and then the range, you just move this. If it's too low compared to the one that's the reference, you move it further away. If it's too high, you move it closer. So this should be good enough, and in fact it can handle deviations more than this. So that is helping us plan our re-entry burn. We still have to do the re-entry burn. And I'm going to just take this plan and ignore it. <laughs> so this is, this is the plan, and we're not going to pay any more attention to that. To be honest, it's pretty, the re-entry program is pretty good about dealing with the rest. We're halfway through our APU fuel. Now, actually, we have too much fuel for the balance. Uh, so we're going to dump some of that. Make sure you don't have more than half the propellant. And really, you don't need that much to come back down. We are still carrying the avgas tank down. So that's 12 tons we're bringing back down. Well, it drifted off on me, so I've stopped it. Probably did it wrong or or something, but eh, it'll work out. <laughs> Let's see what it does. So again, the reentry program is fairly lenient. So even though the fiddling around with that uh, planner is somewhat tricky, and then actually doing this burn can be a little bit tricky because of the tilt of the OMS engines and the timing of it. Uh, Generally, it seems to work out okay at the end. Okay, uh, so I actually wanted to dump the fuel, but I don't have ship manifest. So that's inconvenient. So, before we come down, I'm going to sneak ship manifest into this install so that we can dump the fuel from there. Okay, so we now have ship manifest. And the reentry program does not, as far as I know, take into consideration the mass of the shuttle, so the fact that we're dumping some here doesn't make any difference.
So MMH, Helium, and Mon3, we need to get them down to some sensible level. Okay, so we'll have it at those levels. Hopefully these at least were symmetrically uh, depleted. So a little bit over a third. Okay, so now we can come back down and we can't start the reentry program until we hit 122 kilometers. And so we're going to have to have MechJeb orient us properly initially. So before we hit the atmosphere, let's have MechJeb do this part. You actually don't need to have it at 40 degrees, it'll pitch up there, but you can have it at zero and just pointing prograde will be fine probably. But let's just not give it any extra work. So we're oriented properly, we are now in the atmosphere, but we have to wait until 122 kilometers. And then we run ops3.ks. But only after disabling smart ASS. Okay, and go. So with this, we have to make sure that we're targeting the stock runway. Uh, we'll just go for runway 27, four, well, I mean, fly, flying straight in will be runway, uh, runway 9. Let's just try runway, well, overhead, let's just go with this. Uh, DAP auto, auto flaps, auto brake. So this is completely automatic, this setup. And you can change the approach mode. If we're going for runway 9, I'd go straight, I guess. We'll see what this does. And we should not have anything going on there. Okay. So now it's all on its own. They won't really show anything in particular or do anything until it gets to the right altitude. It is pre-entry right now. Well, we already are getting a bit of a glow here. Okay, it is starting to turn. That's a nice glow on it. Okay, it is modulating a bit. Nope, I thought it was going to go all the way to the other side, but it wasn't a roll reversal. It's just sort of modulating. We are approaching Baja, California. It seems to be on track. Here's where I'm grateful to have some sort of KOS script controlling it because I would feel like I'm falling short, of course. We're ending up in Louisiana there and nowhere near the KSC, but that's why it's important with the shuttle to have some KOS script control it based on numbers instead of just looking at the map view or something. Well, from the looks of things, we're going way far north, but I'll expect a roll reversal to bring us back on course. Here we go. It's starting the roll reversal now, just as I was saying. Well, we've had a glow for a while, but now we're getting the actual flame effects or plasma flex effects. Okay, it is going more extreme here as it goes into Entry Trajectory Phase 2. So there's not a whole lot to do here. It does, though, if it controls the launch and controls the re-entry, leave you free to actually do the missions with the shuttle. And of course, the fuel that we dumped and probably the smear fuel that we have here uh, help you to do that, because this time we didn't do any fancy maneuvers or rendezvous with a station or anything like that, but normally that would be necessary. That's why we ended up with extra that we had to dump in, still more that's hanging out here in our tanks. Typically the shuttle's fuel propellant is a little bit tight. So, something to watch out for. Well, this looks like the Gulf Coast to me. Yes, uh, well, now we're uh, too far south, so it's turning around. It sure has a lot of cross range. Previous versions of the shuttle definitely did not. I wish I could implement whatever is going on with the shuttle on my other space planes, <laughs> right? But unfortunately, this re-entry script does not work with just any space plane or even other shuttles. It has to be this one. So, yeah. Whatever aerodynamic magic it's doing, I, I can't 
take advantage of it for, say, the Shinkansen space plane or anything like that, or any of my other designs, though I would love to have that. Well, now, can it land? That is the question. All right, there's Florida in view. We are just about out of hydrazine, <laughs> uh, which is fine. The electric charge in the battery should hold us through to landing. All right, we are over Orlando. And somewhere over there is the Space Center. Here we go. It's got the air brakes out. They are split properly. Okay, getting ready to turn. And zero. And it is turning. Electricity is running out. Oh no! Okay, uh, for, for the sake of cheating. Uh, <laughs> I thought the power would last through this, but I, I'm not taking any chances here. We're too close. Zeta liters, huh? 20 degree nose down per usual. And now it's pulling up. I told it where the runway is, so it better not land short. It is a fairly short runway, though. I don't know if it's ha it has enough runway the way it's going. It probably should have touched down by now. <laughs> anyway, the gear is down. Oh gosh, it's really going in. Uh, see, I, I think it thinks that the height is different. But it certainly needs a longer runway too. The shuttle runway is much longer than this. Okay, it's got the parachute out. Brakes. I'm applying brakes myself. Uh, so yeah. And if you do have the shuttle runway, because you have Cape Canaveral HD or whatever, You'll still need to measure it out. Program ended. Yes. All right. So we overran the runway a little bit, but that's that's how much extra you need. And this runway is just too short. So anyway, there you have it. That's running the shuttle. So we know we have a few things to fix. Let me just recover this. So the external tank is at 20. We definitely want this to be lower priority. So, this 50 is completely absurd. Um, we want this to be 10, since the external tank is 20. We could probably even set it lower than that. But that's the only fix. Otherwise, it worked fine. And let's make sure that infinite electricity is no longer on in this. But, alright. So, save that. And there you have it. That's how you run the shuttle, the Giulio Dandi shuttle in Kerbal Space Program of Realism Overall. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.